Right, welcome back to another web development video where I'll show you how to make uh, modern websites using HTML5, CSS3, and a little bit of JavaScript. In this video, we're going to jump back into Webflow. Uh, I've done some, uh, some videos and some playlists uh, on using Webflow to build a website. Um, what I want to talk about today is using Webflow to create more of a component-based uh, design uh, or development. Uh, website and what atomic based design is is something that Brad Frost uh, has sort of coined and come up with um, over the years and he's spoken a lot about it I'll show you uh, his site so this is uh, this is the idea so your website is made of these very small uh, parts so think buttons labels there are all these like very small parts and then when we can combine those things together we can create bigger chunks of code or, or bigger components um, and then when we combine a lot of those components together we get uh, bigger sections and then when we combine a lot of those sections together we get templates and then from the templates come actual web pages so this is the idea um, you know you have a label you have an input and then you have a search button and all those are the atoms of the site the little small parts of it but when you combine them together you can actually get some sort of a, uh, a a smaller system of things together and then you can add that into this uh, multiple components like this which are molecules so we take multiple molecules so we have a logo or maybe this is a molecule here and we combine two together to create a header uh, and then you know from from there we're sort of uh, really templating and building out uh, larger sections of the page but this this atoms to molecules seems like uh, sort of the most important part um, so I want to show you how we can do this in uh, Webflow and how Webflow makes it super easy this is actually something that if you watch um, Ron Segal he's a, a developer designer in uh, Tel Aviv Israel and he has a, a YouTube channel called Flux uh, it's really great so if you're a designer an aspiring designer and you want to sort of join the no code development revolution you want to develop sites and design them he has some really great advice on how to deal with clients uh, how to use webflow uh, to be able to create websites um, and hand them off to uh, hand them off to your clients and stuff like that so uh, he has sort of streamlined his approach to webflow to put together some of these common components um, and in Webflow well, we're going to create that that particular site search so that's sort of remember that in your mind um, Webflow has something called symbols and symbols allow you to uh, reuse the content in your design so you can create something once save it as a symbol and then you can actually pull that symbol back onto other pages of your website and when you make changes to the symbol it makes changes all the way across your website sort of a if you've used um, WordPress this is this is what we're doing we're doing modular design right so when you make changes to the header it changes the header wherever the header is referenced across the entire website so utilizing this allows you to sort of streamline streamline your workflow especially if you're using uh, really common components across most of your designs then you can create those things or you can just have a list of of symbols uh, that you're able to you know maybe on the home page you've created several uh, sections that you're going to use throughout the website I do this sometimes where I use a, a call to action let's say and I use that call to action at, on multiple pages throughout the website and so I can create a call to action here save it as a symbol and then whenever I'm ready to pull it onto a page I can just pull it onto the page and if there are any edits that need to happen uh, from design or whatever I can make those edits once to the symbol and it'll edit it all the way across the website so this is pretty powerful uh, for streamlining your workflow especially if you have uh, super common elements uh, across a website and maybe the only things that are going to change between your websites is the colors the fonts things like that and uh, your symbols update to reflect those so let's go ahead and create our uh, search um, 
there's a, a search label, there's an input, and then there's a button. <coughs> so we're going to go in here. We're on the body, and let's just go down to our uh, form block here, and we'll just drag one onto um, onto the page. Now we have more um, we have more things than we need here, really. Uh, so let's go ahead and and just go into our form through the navigator, and I'm just going to get rid of. Uh, this first label and this first text field. We don't need those. We really only need one label and we need a text field and we need a submit button. Um, what I want is this sort of layout here where we have this going all the way across the label and then we have this as a flexed uh, element. So two, two elements inside there we're going to contain them in one single div and we'll make that div our flex container. So if you're familiar with Flexbox, um, this should look very familiar to you. But we got to set up our, our code a little bit. So I like to come in when I'm adding something to a particular block, uh, a container. I have to click on the container and then I'll go back into uh, where my elements are and then I'll just click on that. So I want to add a div block. I clicked on it and then now it adds it to usually to the bottom of that container and then I just want to move it up here uh, right under the field label and then now we need to move our text field and our submit button into this div so that we can use this div as a flexbox container so I'm just going to move that up like this and you can see that it nests underneath uh, the div block We'll just rearrange the text and the button so that the text field comes first. And so now we have our field label here, and then we have our text, um, our Flexbox container. And then inside of our container, we're going to flex the input and we're going to flex the submit button. So if we click on here, we have our display options over here. So this one is Flexbox, this one is Grid, which you could use Grid for this as well. Uh, I'm going to make it, uh, I'm only doing things in one direction, but you can make this entire component a grid so that this this entire form is a grid and then everything sort of uh, has its own row and, and column and that kind of thing. But I'm just going to apply the grid to the div block. So we'll just say flex, I mean I'm going to apply the flex to that. So our div block is now our flex container. And you can see that we have our search field and we have our submit button here. Um, I'm going to go into the, the text field and just make sure this is all right. So this is going to have the name of search and the placeholder is going to be search by keyword. This is not an email form. This is just a plain form. And then we need to change our email address up here to reflect that this is a site search and submit is fine uh, but let's go ahead and, and sort of work on the submit button a little bit uh, we're gonna do a bold and we'll make it we'll make it all capitalized and we'll change the background color of the of the button so let's make it this pink and I'm making it a little bit garish uh, just because I want you to be able to see how we can change uh, change these things as we go and uh, make them into components this has a padding on it or a margin margin so we'll just make that zero okay and so now these line up really well uh, but what I don't want is this taking up the full width of the screen like that uh, it's not my favorite thing, but I'm okay with this input being long and this being just sort of auto. Both of these are flexed to, um, let's see, our settings for those are I don't know where our settings are for those.
can't always remember where everything is. I don't use um, I don't use this every day. Okay. But I know there's a there's a way to check out the the flexed items. Oh, you have to click the item itself. That's why. So when we click on the items inside the flex container, then we get this little three. So you can set the different alignment. So this is uh, aligning everything to shrink as needed, or you can uh, have it grow uh, if it's possible to grow. And then you can also do don't don't shrink or don't grow. Um, that's not what we're looking for. We want it to. We want both elements to shrink to whatever sizes they are. But you can also control. Uh, the width of these things as well. I'm going to control the width of the container uh, itself and I'm going to say uh, I don't want this uh, form block to be more than um, I don't know 20 viewport widths I don't know what that means. Uh, two, let's say 200 pixels so we only want it to be a maximum width of 200 pixels. Maybe we'll go up a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. Um, let's just say 300 pixels. And then uh, now we have this nice, uh, we have our search uh, field, we have our input and we have our submit button. So this is a nice little block um, of components that we put together to make sort of a larger, what Brad Frost calls a molecule. So we've taken all these different elements, uh, atoms, and made a molecule. Now if we come back and we select our form block here, uh, and we go to our symbols, now we can create a symbol. It won't allow you um, to add a symbol unless you click on it. Okay. Um, you can also right click on it and choose create symbol. Um, and so we're just going to create a symbol and we're going to call this uh, site search form. So we'll create the symbol and now you can see that it's green. Okay. So the whole thing is selected and it's green. And over here it tells you um, editing the symbol is going to affect one copy across your website. So it tells you how many times you've put that symbol onto the entire website and then you can double click on it in order to edit what's inside of it. Now we don't want to edit it just yet. What we want to do is we want to add the symbol again. So I just drag it on and you can see that we get the exact same symbol. So anytime we want to put this site search onto uh, any part of our web page and we want it to have this, um, this particular layout we can literally just drag and drop into whatever section that we want to drag it into. Uh, a cool part is, so it says double click, right? You can double click to edit it. So let's say uh, design comes back and they want to make sure that the button is a different color for all of these, uh, these site searches. Uh, all you have to do is come and input whatever color you want and then it changes it. You can see that all of our all of our symbols have changed. If uh, they update the text, you can come in, double click, and then double click into here. Type in the text, and you can see that it's being reflected uh, everywhere. Same thing. Uh, we double click, and then we get into this uh, input. <coughs> So maybe they want to say keywords like this. So you can see it's reflected across the page. And doesn't matter, you can delete this. Um, and you can delete this. When you come back to your symbols, your symbols are still there. It's just that there's no instances of them on the page. But you can see here that it's taken all of our um, all of our changes that we made. And is just available and ready for us to use whenever we want to. So uh, this is a super powerful thing. If you if you just sort of think in your mind from this very basic um, type of example to what are the possibilities 
when you're thinking about your own designs that you make for different clients. Maybe you have uh, templates, maybe you uh, have things that you use um, over and over and over again for different clients. If you can systematize that a little bit, now you've sped up having to recreate that section all the time. Uh, so this is a really powerful component and one that, uh, like I said, Ron uh, Seagull, Seagull, I think is how you say it, um, it's one that he says transformed the business from just the sort of laborious making a website over a few days uh, into he can literally put together a site in a matter of hours uh, from the client from the design portion and the wireframes he can go straight into Webflow created a um, either a landing page or a multi-page uh, site for a client just in a matter of hours and part of that is because he understands you know once you've laid out that home page and you've gotten a lot of your uh, design elements together um, then it's just a matter of making those symbols and then moving those symbols in there so you can think about creating uh, different types of submit buttons or different types of buttons for your website so maybe you have uh, a button for this particular occasion you have a button for this particular occasion and you can componentize make those into components that you can reuse throughout your website so that becomes a very powerful uh, tool for efficiency and because you're not recreating the wheel every single time so hopefully this is uh, if you use webflow or if you don't use webflow check it out uh, it's a really cool program uh, if you already know some web development and you want to um, sort of get out of the WordPress web space but you still want to be able to do uh, this type of thing where you have components and you have you know templating and things um, Webflow is a really good alternative. It's web-based. Uh, it's free to try out. So this is just on the free account here. I don't pay for Webflow. Um, but I do like to show it because I think it's a really great uh, no-code solution. Probably the best one uh, that I've used um, for web developers. I don't know that it's necessarily appropriate for someone who doesn't really know what they're doing uh, as far as web design is concerned. Um, I could suggest another one of those. but for those who write code this is just sort of a visual way for you to write the code you know you can drag things with your mouse as opposed to typing things in so it's not that there's no code it's just that you're not typing code uh, actively so if you have any questions leave them down in the comment section below I'd be happy to hear them um, if you have any other suggested resources for um, atomic web design or anything that has been helpful for you uh, just conceptually to be able to understand atomic web design leave those down in the comments as well and uh, if you have any questions I'm happy to get to them as quickly as I can um, make sure you subscribe to the channel we've had more subscribers here lately so it's been really great and uh, I'm really appreciative that that people find the content uh, engaging enough and helpful enough and uh, that's really what I'm here to do is to, to help you guys uh, to sort of continue moving forward uh, wherever that is, whether you're at the beginning or in the middle, uh, you know, continuing to move forward with your um, with your design and development and your growth uh, as someone who writes code or builds websites uh, for clients or for yourself or for a company. Um, all right, I think that's all I got. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you again next time.